right, while he's getting mic'd up. So hands up those who've got a bank account. <laughs> wow, that's like 80%. <laughs> so if you don't have a bank account, then you might want to go and get a coffee or something. Can't hear anything. Hands up those who love their bank. <laughs> That's impressive. That is impressive, or you're lying, or you work for these guys. <laughs> so uh, you know where your, your bread's buttered. All right, so I, just a real quick introduction. I'm Ben Henschel. Um, I am the Director for Financial Services in Asia Pacific, and I have the, uh, the great pleasure of traveling up and down the Asia Pacific coast, as I call it. Uh, up to Korea and out to China and J Japan and down to Australia and even occasionally I get to that great white cloud country called New Zealand and then out to India and, and all in between. So I see a huge variety of what's going on in financial services and the dynamicism that's going on. And one of the great things we've got with this panel over the next 25, 30 minutes is we have representation from New Zealand. We have representation, yep. Let's have a hand for New Zealand. <laughs> Louder. I, I, think, I think he has a record for the longest uh, travel distance to get to uh, Boston. Yeah. We have representation from Canada. Woo. Yes. Woo. From Finland. From New York. And actually Argentina. Mm -hmm. So, so I, think, I think we win the diversity award. All right. So I'm just going to ask some questions, and uh, we're going to hear what these gentlemen uh, have to say, what's going on in their world. So if you gentlemen could just very briefly, in, in about a minute or so, just explain how long you've been using Red Hat OpenShift, what's roughly in your stack, uh, what version, if you know, and, and start off by saying your company and what you do there. That'd be great. OK. Hi, uh, my name's uh, Glenn Rhodes, New Zealand accent, probably tell. Uh, I work for ANZ Bank as the platform manager for container services um, stack, I'm assuming technical stack. Uh, run on x86 platform using VMware. And uh, current version is 3.11. And um, we've recently migrated to that and uh, pretty seamless. We run a blue-green um, upgrade and it's uh, proved to be quite good. We're busy picking out all the new Prometheus um, set product sets and uh, eagerly waiting in uh, the 4.x version. As we all are. Yeah. Okay. Great. Hi. Uh, my name is Walid. I work for uh, CIBC, which is the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. It's one of the big uh, five banks in, uh, in Canada. I'm the senior director for the uh, data center services, so my team manages all the uh, data center services. Um, we have been using OpenShift for roughly two years, we're on version 3.7. Uh, we're obviously in the uh, process of upgrading uh, as well. Um, and uh, we're you know, looking to move some of our Crown Jewel uh, applications uh, onto OpenShift. Today it's on the private cloud. We're actually implementing, supposed to go uh, live in uh, Azure as well uh, in the next uh, uh, month or so. Okay, Eero Arvonen from Suomen Asiakastieto. We are a credit information company in the Nordics. Can you, can you just say that a bit slower so people can understand the name of the company? <laughs> oh. Thanks. Suomen Asiakastieto. Okay, everyone company. repeat after me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, our CEO uh, tends to make this joke that um, any foreigner will go to extreme lengths not to um, pronounce our, our name. So uh, you're all excused <laughs> for not uh, trying. Um, <clears throat> So we've, been, um, we've, ha have, we've had our um, private uh, OpenShift cluster for about a year now. We are running version 3.10. Um, it's running on VMware. We mostly develop on um, Java, on uh, EAP. Um, let's see what else. Uh, so I'm a solution architect. Um, I split my work about 50-50 between um, designing and developing our, our services and um, doing other um, OpenShift-related process development. I'm Raj Chana from Royal Bank of Canada. Um, I am part of the technology infrastructure team there where I run the technology strategy and research function. So we've been using OpenShift for about two and a half, three years now. And we are currently on 3.9, and we are in the process of going to 3.11. So what's in the stack? I would say um, 
you know, apart from the core OpenShift uh, infrastructure itself, the master nodes, the infrastructure nodes, and the app nodes, I think um, some critical components are the CI CD platform that goes with it, um, the different repositories, which are, you know, whether it is, you know, a code repository or container repositories. We do have um, vulnerability scanning engines, both for code and containers. Uh, and then, you know, I think uh, all the logging and monitoring function that goes with it and, you know, the external load balancers, et cetera. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm Daniel Sanchez from Banco Hipotecario. We have started using OpenShift like more than one year ago, but we strongly are working on that from September, October of past year. We are currently in a project of migrating all the API, all the old services that we used to have to APIs. It's a, it's a very aggressive project that we are now in CARES. Uh, we started that for two reasons. Why? Because the bank is uh, investing strongly in all the digital transformation, but also because we had a need of going on that direction because we were in an obsolete platform before. So now that the project is going on, we already have many things in production and we are just uh, start seeing all the benefits that they have. Uh, but still, we need to get more metrics and, and start knowing the program. Every time that you implement anything, you know how that works, and you go adjust, and then go again, and adjust. It's something that is like a cycle you are going on. Yeah, thank you. So we can see here, ladies and gentlemen, that there's quite a diverse maturity and adoption of OpenShift with their different versions and uh, their different infrastructure stacks. So I think this is quite a, quite a good panel particularly given the different uh, geographies that they're dealing with. Um, can you just tell me, um, what was the impetus for your organization to start looking at containers, Kubernetes, OpenShift, and maybe just briefly set the business context of what it was that started that journey for you? Uh, I guess the business context is um, firmly in our digital space. Um, banking's a quite competitive market. It's getting more competitive with open source banking. Uh, our traditional way of um, delivering services could take weeks or months, and that wasn't good enough. So they challenged uh, technology to look at a, a solution. So from a technical perspective, it was pretty easy. Um, everyone knows about containers and <coughs> Kubernetes. Um, so we set off on a journey to uh, not only pot that, but a, a bunch of other services that we needed, um, Bitbucket, Artifactory, and so on like that, Jenkins. Um, so we not only um, set a journey underway with OpenShift, but mm. also Bitbucket, Jenkins, and um, Artifactory to support it. And um, that was really exciting. So we took a bunch of our rock stars, we put them in a room, and we got started. And uh, it's been about a year and a half, and we've been live in production for over eight months now. A large portion of our digital services are running on that or starting to develop onto the platform. So um, it, it, it's been interesting, it's been hectic, um, massive learning curve for everyone involved, but um, we have fully automated CID, C, CI-CD patterns um, integrated with ServiceNow. We have an inbuilt app that um, automates all the testing and approvals for that, so it's pretty much a zero-touch solution. And um, you know that, that's a big tick in the box to all the techs that were involved in and so on, because um, it's really meant that we've been e able to take what was probably a cadence of two to three months down to three or four minutes. And they could drop every day if they wanted, but they don't. So. Glenn, can I just quickly ask, what's the reaction from the business been like? I mean, have they seen <coughs> that improvement or that, that agility and that time to value? Oh, definitely. So, I mean, if you think the business come up with an idea or a concept for a feature, and it's in production the following week versus three or four months, so definite business value. Smiles all around. Smiles all around, yeah. Right, you're the hero. I'm not, my, <laughs> my team is. <laughs> Very modest, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so uh, I think actually for us it's kind of interesting because it wasn't really driven by the application team or the infrastructure team, was, you know, it actually was a uh, move from the architecture team saying, yeah, we want to, uh, industrialize, if you like, microservices, create an API marketplace 
and open you know those APIs for you know use by everybody. So it was really you know a push into creating that uh, open uh, bank, if you like. And there's a session actually that uh, our architecture team uh, are going to present on Wednesday. If you're interested, you can uh, go and listen uh, to the team talking about this whole uh, transformation. That is really how it started. This is you know who pushed us into the container space uh, from an infrastructure uh, deploying containers you know using openshift to support the teams we actually have roughly 40 or you know or plus uh, you know microservices running there but um, you know to to your point uh, Ben around uh, you know what the reaction was in fact actually what happened is that we uh, the the other 80 teams or the application development team got quite excited about uh, the potential so as we were building this uh, API marketplace and building the infrastructure to support it, you know, the demand was just, you know, uh, was really uh, beyond what we expected. We actually have a bunch of apps that even went uh, live today in our private cloud. Uh, you know, if you're into structured notes, you can go notes.cibc.com. You know, just uh, here's a plug if you, you know, if you want to uh, uh, do structured notes uh, in <laughs> capital market. Um, but you know, uh, it was uh, it was really uh, interesting that uh, I think you know the the teams, the AD teams, started seeing the. The potential, uh, you know, in terms obviously of the time to market, in terms of you know how the uh, you know the architecture really differs from the legacy that we have, um, and you know uh, we're seeing a lot of excitement, uh, you know, in, right. uh, in that uh, space. Thank you. Okay. Well, for us, um, our business is very critical during the business hours, so um, we used to have to deploy in very strange times, such as Sundays or early mornings or stuff like that. And, you, you don't uh, like getting up at 2 a.m. in the morning <laughs> on a do Sunday? You, do you? <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> so that's definitely that, um, that, that it's something that was mended by, by the OpenShift platform. Now, another thing regarding this high availability thing is that the way we used to run um, our systems is that we have a set number of application um, servers which are crammed with um, deployed artifacts. And now if one of those goes haywire, that can affect other services as well. So resource isolation provided by containers is definitely a huge factor. All right. Great. So at uh, RBC, we've been going through a cultural transformation for a couple of years now, mainly to you know, enable the business to you know, move faster, to be more agile, right? So to that end, we done a lot of things with Agile, DevOps, how people interact with each other, the way we do. We reward a uh, open source culture, an engineering culture, how innovation happens, et cetera. So all of this is to uh, enable faster time to market, right? Faster provisioning, enabling applications to be delivered faster. Um, these are some of the core things. I mean, there are obviously other benefits that come with it, like, you know, um, to be able to you know, better utilize hardware, mm -hmm. to do you know, developer uh, efficiency, improve developer efficiency, et cetera. So yours was more driven by uh, the need to provide or, or shorten the supply chain of getting a developer productive. And enable the business to make right. you know, changes Right, which is about faster. getting code yep. into production. Yep. Right, thank you. In our case, uh, customers are expecting to have more functionalities every day, and if you want to go in the market, you need to go and then. So, of course, the business in the bank want to make all this in parallel, so we, we need to have not a monolithic application, we need to go and, and have the functionalities divided in containers to, to be able to touch all in the same time. Given that uh, and the velocity that we have for deploying in, in that uh, architecture, and also for the stability that they give us, and the ability also to scale in that big days is some of the, the factors that make us go in that direction. Right, thank you, Daniel. I th you know, I think, f folks, uh, again, just with my experience across Asia Pacific, I I've seen in financial services this real switch from a cost-saving sort of model of save money, you know, IT department, to now how do you enable the digitization of banking or financial services in the most expeditious and fast and agile way, how do you get your code out into production in the most efficient and productive and st stable, high-performing way? And it sounds like from all of you, really, that's been the prime motivator. I've not heard really about as much how do you save money to how do you actually deliver code you know, in, a, in a consistent and, and much more, more lean way. Um, 
Can I, can I ask you, gentlemen, um, what are the top two things that you're planning on doing with containers or OpenShift in the next sort of 12 months, just to give the audience a sense of, you know, now that you've got the platform in or you're actually, you know, putting a number of applications already in production, what, what are you next looking at? What are the top one or two things that you're looking at doing over the next sort of 12 months? Just two. Just two. Just two, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we put ourselves under pressure, so it's about five. But um, um, for our customer, we're um, looking at AQM or Kafka as a service, also service mesh. Um, for the team, we're focusing on, obviously on version four, yep. um, but also with version four, potentially a gen two um, platform redesign. Um, so that's our key focus. So, uh, one of the other things we're doing also is, uh, is showcasing the technology to different teams within technology, um, just to ensure that that cadence or that uptake of the, the tech stack it becomes very visible and people start looking at it and want right. to do it. So that's our key focus. Thank you. Yeah, I think there's a laundry list of items, you know, upgrade, you know, um, make sure that, you know, we have the right skills and, you know, all of that. Uh, I think the, the, the one of the interesting one. Uh, uh, for me is actually uh, work better with or work closer with the application and the solution de design teams. Uh, you know, the, the way the architecture is is completely different from the old legacy. You know, in the old, in the old days, we used to say it's like for like. What we want now is like for better. So sit with them, make them understand, you know, how that this is not the same way. Um, you know, I have an app. You know, this is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to now deploy an app and then I need, you know, uh, you know, 15 different machines, you know, and I'm, I'm going to, you know, buy 15 different nodes for OpenShift, and then another app is going to have another 15, and we end up with, you know, 600 CPU consumed on apps that, frankly, are not actually worth that most probably, right? But, you know, it's more around, uh, you make them understand how the architecture is, and, uh, and obviously also understand better how we charge back with a bank. So at the end of the day, uh, I give you a dollar, you know, so you can save you know, a certain amount could be a dollar, could be more, depending on you know how you, how uh, you know your finance team, how stringent your finance team is. So it's very important actually that uh, you know we figure out the right cost model and help our uh, solution design team and application team understand actually how to size and how to design properly and how that uh, the, you know it's a change in uh, in the way things would work. There is you know there is more sharing. It's not you know your isolated legacy system like you used to do. Is a lot of hardware. You know it's not just about saving, but it's also about you know uh, just a change in the mentality. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, so for the last year, um, it's been clear that the new way we're developing our services is is pretty successful. And right now we have mandate to basically uh, make build our, all of our new services uh, right on OpenShift. But that hasn't completely happened. So it's my personal goal to pull that all, all the way to 100% uh, for the new, new um, services. So that's, that's one. And um, then there's the other thing. We had this merger last year. We bought a, a Swedish company. And uh, basically, I'm, uh, I need to take my developer hat off and put my salesperson hat on to make sure that OpenShift is adopted and they come on, on the board. Swedish side as well. Right. So that's, um, that's uh, I, I bet that's the <laughs> most difficult part. Can you pronounce the name for <laughs> the Swedish company? You see. Okay. Oh, that's much easier. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Swedes and the Finns always get on, don't they? No comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The top two things, I think, um, well, over the past couple of years, we've been doing a lot of work on containerizing Linux workloads, right? I mean, uh, we see there's a big opportunity in containerizing Windows workloads now. Right. So uh, essentially with, uh, you know, .NET, uh, that is a big area of opportunity for us. That's something that we'll be concentrating on going forward. Um, the um, the other thing, too, is we like this marriage that has happened between IBM and Red Hat, essentially because uh, RBC is a big IBM shop and uh, like every other bank here. So, um, you know, we, um, in order to support all the IBM frameworks, we had to, uh, in the absence of this, um, um, you know, integration, uh, we, would, we would have had to create separate clusters. They would sort of be like, two different brains that don't talk to each other. Um, you know, different resources, no discovery, et cetera, et cetera. So now it makes it very easy for us to be able to containerize traditional workloads 
running on most of these IBM frameworks. So I think that's something that uh, we're excited yeah, about. Focus on, yeah, interesting. It's interesting about the Windows, um, about that. I mean, I, I've been at Red Hat 11 and a half years, and you know, obviously having a Satya talk tomorrow, and then you know, Microsoft do their thing, and it's just wonderful to see this lovely heterogene heterogeneity and polyglot really coming to the fore and to, to have a bank talk about the fact that they're going to be focusing on Microsoft workloads on OpenShift, you know, one of the most highly regulated industries, I think, is you know, just testament to the fact of this stuff actually working. Thank you. Daniel. Uh, well, I mentioned before that we are in the middle of this project for putting all these uh, old services in, in APIs and microservices, but that was more than you need than uh, the, the project that we want to do. That's how open different doors or different functionalities to, to be able to, to develop in the in the bank. We have created a, a, the onboarding, a digital onboarding for our customers. Uh, we put that all over OpenShift. The, it's a new channel and calling all the APIs for validating identity of the person, uh, calling uh, uh, to an agency that is governmental agency for validating that the person is who is saying. Uh, making facial recognition, using incognito services. Uh, we already launched that on December of that year, and we continue evolving that. And in the meantime, we are talking here, they are making the last stress test because we are launching the, the new home banking for the bank that's also using all APIs based on OpenShift. And of course, every time we are launching something, we need to test and ensure that all the configurations are set properly. But, uh, we are going on that direction. Every channel, every API that we are developing, we are making our engineering and putting that on OpenShift. Right, right. Thank you. Um, just in the time we have, and, and I'll leave it up to you as to which question you'd like to answer on this. Um, so, <laughs> it's it's easy multiple one. choice. Yeah. <laughs> the easy one. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> um, the way that Red Hat thinks about financial services is Generally, sort of really three themes around digital engagement. Uh, there's a, you know, this theme around open banking, which is really this API first approach of internal and then external, and then those sorts of things with legislation coming in, but then the new markets that that presents. And then that transactional operational efficiency and high security. And we all know the internet's really safe, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, in, that, in those, sorts of, those sorts of three themes, it's up to you as to which you'd like to answer. How, how is OpenShift and this whole move of agile development aligning to those, one of those three themes if you are doing that? Now, if you don't want to answer that question, um, if you had your time again, what would you do differently in, if, in having container adoption and using OpenShift in a much more rapid way? So what are some lessons learned? So you can either answer both, or you can take one of those. Um, Probably take the latter. Go for it. And answer the other one. Um, what would you do again? Um, it's not, not so much the, what, what, what we've done technically. It's more around. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be technical. It can be yeah. political, cultural, sponsorship. It's, it's, it's more around culture, I think. And um, one of the clear things we've noticed over the last three or four months is um, the, the adoption uh, to look at the technology stack has slowed down a bit. And maybe when we started, we should have had a similar light team running in parallel that would help. Uh, we've got quite a large development community, java.net core, um, help them uh, or coach them onto the new technology stacks, much like the innovation labs, I guess. Um, but listening today, I think that innovation labs are great. It's been a red hat person up on stage with uh, partners talking about all the success stories. So that's, um, Quite interesting, but yeah, if we could do one thing again, I think we would um, put just as much effort into a team that was going to uh, coach and take our developers on a journey. Right. So you're saying, Glenn, it's build it. They won't necessarily come. It's build it and and get the, yeah, the adoption think, on it on a much I think we're more rapid the way. we're the victims of our own success. <laughs> yeah. we, uh, one of our goals was to have a. Uh, a a full self-service stack, and it's so much so that all they have to do is apply for access and they don't have to talk to us again. They can pretty much put something into, create a project and run it through the CICD um, pipelines and, and put it into prod within a week if they wanted right. to. So, and we wouldn't know. Right. Um, so that's sort of the downside of that is some of them think it might be too hard and go back to the old traditional way of thinking, I'll put this on a server. 
Um, we just want to quell that and um, coach and um, help people on the journey as well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, for us, uh, open banking, uh, you know, is, uh, was the driver that started, uh, you know, uh, on the container uh, path. Uh, it is uh, absolutely part of uh, and parcel of uh, our strategy in the bank. It's very, very important. So that piece, you know, will continue. This is going to be a huge focus, uh, you know, for uh, our bank. I would say uh, the other piece, you know, uh, you know, if I go back in time, I would, um, I would spend more time with uh, my, uh, you know, uh, the community of practice with the uh, development team, break more barriers, explain that uh, you know, sharing is not just caring, but sharing will also result in better uh, you know, return on investment and you know, financial, because every one of those units obviously are liable for, you know, for, the, you know, for the cost of uh, the infrastructure that gets built. So more of you know, explaining how uh, you know, we're changing the way uh, we're doing the infrastructure and that you know, we, can, we can see more of, uh, you know, of the consolidation. Uh, that's, you know, that's an interest for us as infrastructure in general, mm. but you know, it's also uh, useful for our uh, business because they can see uh, benefits on the, you know, on, the, on the financial side, you know, reducing uh, in a cost, whether it's, uh, it's you know, capital on the, you know, on our, uh, you know, or, uh, uh, or ongoing from, you know, uh, uh, you know, from uh, uh, our computer, if you like, yep. uh, uh, resources, right? Yeah, mm. yeah I mean, I, I, I find that, just real quick on this open banking, and maybe um, if our Finnish friends want to talk about that, um, because we all talk about microservices and containers and CICD, but basically in banking the AP or insurance, the, bank, the, the banking's APIs are the products, and if the product is not performing, then we need to get it off the shelf or off the field fix it and then get it back out there and how do you do that in a really expeditious way and have that feedback about the usability of the product. Um, so uh, yeah, over to you. Right, uh, well, <clears throat> so we are a um, credit information company and PSD2 is uh, very interesting to us for, for that reason because well, we, we could really use the access to the accounting information data. Now, in the EU, um, open banking is, is really driven by the PSD2 regulation. And there's a huge lack of standards there. So developing anything on top um, is like um, shooting in the dark, basically, hoping to hit something, right? <laughs> so <clears throat> um, with, with the platform, we're able to, uh, to uh, make the, like the feedback loop much, much um, quicker. And we're able to work with the banks. For instance, we're, um, we can easily deploy parallel environments for testing for specific purposes and expose them to specific customers, some of our pilot customers. Um, yeah. And that, I mean, open sh and open shift in that architecture makes it obviously a lot more uh, efficient and faster to do. Definitely, that. definitely. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll take the uh, what would you do differently question, right? So uh, we all know there's a learning curve with Kubernetes. Um, and uh, to that end, we find that um, you know, in a big enterprise, you know, people are always busy. They're trying to do a lot of different things at the same time, and uh, you know, making it a lot more easier for people, for developers, to be able to um, containerize something. Uh, you know, we started off doing CI/CD with some existing uh, tools that we had, and you know, it's you know, it's even for people who have used CI/CD traditionally in a traditional environment, or maybe in another uh, past service like you know, Cloud Foundry, for example. There are some changes when you move over to OpenShift in Kubernetes, right? So, um, what we you know, what I would have done differently is possibly made it as simple as an AWS Lambda or something like that, where they would, uh, you know, like something similar to an S2I that OpenShift has, but, you know, something that works within the constraints of a bank and within the restrictions of a bank. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. Daniel. In your case, when you say open banking, it's the target that we are pointing. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. That, we have many regulations that need to go together with the technology, right? So in the case that we can, we are opening some of the APIs to the, to the maybe another company, so or in our case, we have one example of a, it's like a housing ministry that we are opening for creating microcredits to, it's a kind of social service that the government gives. 
And that, that's kind of functionalities. Now we are open to, to provide to external agents. But there is a re-education of uh, the business, a re-education of the people to start seeing that opportunities, right? Yeah. It's not only that the technology needs to be there and that's all. Now we have the opportunity. Then what we need to do with that things it's really up to them, yeah, the possibilities that this opens up, mm -hmm. yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we, we're kind of at the top of the, uh, the hour, so Diane's going to be very thankful that we're, uh, we're on time, which is, you know, unusual for, for bankers. Um, <laughs> yeah. So can we put our hands together for this wonderful panel? Thanks, guys. Thank you very much.